Dear friends, this video brings you an important message. It's about giving. We have not had an appeal since 2008 and your parish should be making a financial loss year by year. Now is the time to change that. Now is your opportunity to make sure that our Christian community has the financial resources to do Christ's work in Guildford and the wider world. We at St Joseph's are Christian people with a mission. We, the people of St Joseph's Parish community, are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ, to realise who is our neighbour and to respond lovingly in word and deed to the power of the Holy Spirit. Responding lovingly to the Holy Spirit. Hey guys, come follow me. Who are you? I am the way, the truth and the life. Okay. <laughs> Jesus called his disciples and they left their nets at once and followed him. Each one of us at St Joseph's has heard that call. Each one of us is invited to respond lovingly to the power of the Holy Spirit. God calls us to obey his commandments, to love him with all our hearts and to love our neighbours as ourselves. Do this, Jesus said, and life is yours. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Christ, the man for others, gave himself for us. He invites us to give ourselves to him and to our neighbour. Giving ourselves is living out Christ's command to love one another as I have loved you. Giving ourselves means giving our time to attending Mass, to prayer and scripture readings, to activities to support our parish community. Because as part of a community we, we already need to have a, a, something we can do to sort of give something back to the community and this, this is just a very small thing. Giving ourselves means giving some of the money God has given us to St Joseph's and to perhaps to other charities to support the mission of the church, the poor, the sick and others who need our, our help. Giving is an expression of love. In the Old Testament, God laid down a commandment to Moses on Mount Sinai that the Hebrews must tithe, that is, give a tenth of their income to God. This law of tithing was still very much alive in Jesus' time. Mary and Joseph tithed. Jesus tithed. The scribes and Pharisees tithed. Jesus did not criticise this law of tithing, but his approach was much more radical and challenging. He did not talk about a tenth. He did show that love and giving are very closely connected. To the rich young man who had kept all the commandments, Jesus said, go, sell all that you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Have you said everything you own? I don't think they have. 
Yeah, Jesus said, go and sell all you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then, come, follow me. Hi Jesus, I'm Zacchaeus. Nice to meet you. Julie, could you please bring in those bed sheets? Thank you so much. Basically, I've been meaning to tell you that I'm giving away half of my property and business to the poor. You know, to various charities and orphanages. Um, there's mine, especially in the detail. Today, salvation has come to this place. Zacchaeus, the tax collector, welcomed Jesus joyfully with these words. Look, sir, I'm going to give half my property to the poor. These people have contributed money they had over, but she, from the little she had, has put in all she had to live on. Hey Paul, you know that podcast that you did for the Corinthians on YouTube? It was such a hit, do you want to do a second? Yeah, why not? Camera. Hi Corinthians, today I'm going to talk about the Macedonian Christians. They, not get, they gave not only their, all their earnings, but everything they could to the Lord. Jesus was rich, but he became poor for our sake. See you next week. St Paul praises the church in Macedonia, where the Christians were very poor. He writes, they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. They gave themselves first to the Lord. Many of you too give generously. Some of you tithe. Some of you give 5% to St Joseph's and 5% to other charities. That 5% for St Joseph's means for an, a household income of £40,000, £125 a month, that's £29 a week. We will all account for our giving when, as Jesus says, the Son of Man comes in glory. He will ask us whether we fed the hungry, whether we visited the sick, and whether we gave our talents generously in God's work. Peter Braganza becomes our treasurer later this year. He will explain why your parish needs more money and how you can give. I would like to take a few moments to explain the reason for this appeal and why we need your help and your support. Some of you will have taken and read the latest set of accounts of St. Joseph's Church. You will have seen that last year our expenses were just over £200,000. That is, just under £4,000 a week. The money you give goes towards the upkeep of the church and buildings, to pay our staff and the expenses of our priests, and to make a contribution to the running of the diocese. In fact, your money goes to support the real work of the church through various parish activities such as the liturgies, catechesis, youth work, and pastoral ministry. As a Christian community, we are entirely self-supporting. We meet our expenses from the money you give. We have no reserve fund to draw upon in case of an emergency. St. Joseph's had been struggling financially for a number of years. Last year, we had a shortfall of 7,500 pounds. The year before, the shortfall was 8,000 pounds. And this year, we are expecting a larger shortfall of about 18,000 pounds. As a community, you have always responded generously to the many appeals we have had. And whilst this is not an appeal to help with a terrible tragedy or an urgent disaster, it is nonetheless extremely important. We need to cover our deficit and to do more. This will enable our community to grow, stay strong and fulfill its mission. We need your time, talent and financial help and we thank you for them. And why is tithing important to you? It's important to me 
Firstly, I think because it is a biblical concept, uh, Jesus suggested that we should do that um, because uh, he was a strict Jew, I suppose. And um, I'm very sold on God. He's number one in my life. So I want to do the things that he's instructed me to do. And although I'm on benefit, I have never been short of money. I have to be careful but I've never been embarrassingly short. So I think too that, that he has looked after me because I'm trying to do what I believe is the right thing. And what would you say to somebody considering um, tithing as part of their life? I would, I would encourage them to give it a go. I think I would always say to them, don't start giving too much because if you give too much and then you fail, you feel a lot worse than if you start small and find that you can give more and suddenly find that your finances are in a fantastic condition because you've got the Lord of the whole universe looking after your bank account. <laughs> well, I've always had the belief of tithing, you know, um, since, well, a few years back now, actually. Well, I think the first thing you've got to realise is that all that we have and all that we own is from God in the first place. That's the most important thing. It's, it's, it's very important to, I think, if you can come to a realisation that um, first, God owns it all. Second, um, it's, it's what He wants you to do with His money um, so that He can, or so you can help further the church. But God provides for all our needs. So, you know, don't be fearful of the fact that if I give a little bit this week or next month, or whatever it is, that you, you'll come short. You'll never come short. I mean, I, I've got to say that um, in my experience, my family's experience, we've never gone without anything. You know, we've always had more than enough. So how can you give? And what's the best way to give financially? The best way is to give by standing order. A monthly standing order assures us of your support. It helps us to plan better and makes the collection easier. You will see a standing order form in the pledge pack. Please fill one out. The next best thing, if you're a taxpayer, is to gift aid your contribution. Gift aid increases the value of what you give. For every hundred pounds that you give, the taxman will give St. Joseph's an extra 25 pounds. That is an extra 25% which greatly helps the work we do. We encourage you to give by standing order, to review your giving each year, and to gift aid your contribution if you're a taxpayer. We hope and pray that each one of us will respond lovingly to the power of the Holy Spirit. Our mission at St. Joseph's, as we heard at the beginning, is to respond lovingly in word and deed to the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, give, and there will be gifts for you. The amount you measure out will be the amount that you receive back. May we all, young and old, respond lovingly to the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.